very possible that every single day things are supposed to be getting to you that don't get to you. It's supposed to be happening for you, but it's not happening for you. It's very possible. And that's really, um, that's really tragic if your life is not looking the way that the Holy Spirit really wants it to look because of something you're missing in your authority or something you're, you're missing in your activity, your, your weapons. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, which means that it's higher than the realm of carnality. And that's where all of Satan's weapons are in carnality. Lust is all in carnality. Distraction is carnality. Fear is carnality. Worry is carnality. Stress is carnality. Strife is carnality. Jealousy is carnality. So every device of Satan is in carnality. So when the word says that the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, demons use carnality to war against your soul. But the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. Which means that it is opposite, it's higher. It's not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So Satan creates strongholds in you through carnality. Wow. Wow. You have to receive carnality firstly before a stronghold could be built up in your soul. So so even um, the, the carnality of distraction, before you could be uh, wearing a stronghold of being a distracted person, you have to entertain firstly that carnality. So carnality is really the door that you have to walk through first for lust to stick, for jealousy to stick, for a disrespect and dishonor to stick, for disloyalty, un uh, inconsistency, unfaithfulness to stick. You got to first walk through that door of carnality. This is amazing to me. Because I, I never taught this ever. I never taught this ever. And it, it, and it just came to me as I started the broadcast. I didn't think about this earlier. It just started resonating when I got on here. Because now you know that carnality is really the primary strategy that Satan uses to link you to all the other strongholds and devices which cripple you, paralyze you, so that you don't use the anointing that you're given. I just heard the Spirit of God say this. Demotion is really your unwillingness to use the weapons that you have. Demotion is unwillingness to use the wisdom in which you do carry. The saddest thing about demotion is this. You're not being demoted because you're unequipped. You get demoted because you refuse to use the equipment. Demotion doesn't mean that you lost ammo. You got the ammo. But demotion means that you refuse to pull the trigger. When Saul was demoted, it wasn't because Saul didn't have kingliness in him. It's because Saul rejected the kingliness.
Judas didn't betray Jesus because he was a slave to betrayal. Judas just rejected the power of discipleship in which he was taught. Lucifer did not turn against God because Lucifer wasn't carrying anointing to fight for God, to love God. Lucifer turned against God because Lucifer rejected the impartation, prophetic and apostolic impartation right here, right now. You don't live poor because God don't give you information about how to be blessed and wealthy and prosperous. You live poor because you reject the information. Laziness is often loving the results but hating the path to get there. Did you, did you, did you see that? Laziness is often loving the results, but hating the path to get there. Somebody wants a six pack, or oh, I want my stomach to look like that, but you don't want to do sit ups. Oh, you know, I want muscles. I want muscles. But 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 you don't want to lift the weights every day. You, you know I want I want good looking legs, but baby you got to squat, baby you got to squat, you got to squat. You know you know you know I I don't you know I I, I want to feel like my best me, but you don't believe in putting on makeup. God created makeup so you edit your daddy. <laughs> you be it. You can't see your daddy moving through you. Be like, be like, diggle, Elroy, Elroy, right there, Elroy. Elroy, she be like, I know I look good. I know I look good. Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Can you tell? Can you tell me where to go? Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. M Mister, Mister. Uh, excuse me, sir. <laughs> we popping out in a drizzle. I know I look good. I know I look good. Sir, may I use your pen? Can I use your pen? Oh, I meant ma'am. Can I use your pen? Yes, your pen. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, your seat is right. I apologize. Ma'am, your seat is right here. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 1 says something amazing, right? It says, uh, And the man to whom God giveth riches and wealth and honor, that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth. But God does not give him the power to eat it. But a stranger eateth it. Then the text begins to go on to say, for this is vanity and an evil disease.
Ecclesiastes 6 1 says that God has given this man riches, wealth, and honor. That he has nothing that he wanted for his soul. Of all the things that he desires. This means that this man has his inheritance right there. He doesn't recognize it. It's all around him. It's already been given to him. God already did the transaction for it to be his. And saints, watch this here. The word of God says that this man, God does not give him the power to eat it. He doesn't, and the word eat means to partake of, to enjoy, to experience, to uh, just how the word says, taste and see that the Lord is good. It's saying that this man, he doesn't have the power from God. God does not give him the power to take what he has. Saints, do you know why this man doesn't have power to take what he has? Because he's not a faithful sower. He's not a faithful sower. He gets weary in well-doing. He doesn't complete the beginning of his obedience. Now he begins, he doesn't end. This is not only the person that starts also, this is the person that never begins as well. So, so there's a person that starts and doesn't finish, but there's a person that never starts. God does not give him the power to eat his inheritance. But here's the scary thing. God has given him the wealth but then strips him of the power to enjoy. God has given him the honor, but strips him of the power to enjoy. God has given him riches. This is what the word of God say. We in Ecclesiastes 6.1, God has given him riches, but takes away the power for him to take the riches. So what do you think is happening to this man? His life is not the way that God intended it to be. He doesn't accomplish what God sent him to the earth to accomplish. He loses battles that he's supposed to win. His conditions is not the way that God intended the conditions to be. God has taken away the power from him, from him for him to eat the wealth, the riches, and the honor. So this means that God, his will is for him to have the wealth, the riches, the honor. But this man is not meeting the requirements of God. For God's will to materialize and manifest. This man is not on the kingdom system. This man doesn't trust God. This man doesn't praise God. This man's interest is not the Lord Jesus. This man's interest is not prayer. This man's interest is not honoring God with his money. This man is not thinking about the next instruction that will come from the Holy Ghost. This man does not want to keep the protocols of God. This man will go apart from how God said to do a thing and he'll do it his own way. Let's look at the next part of Ecclesiastes 6.1. It says that this man does not have power from God to eat. But it says that a stranger eateth the wealth, the riches. The honor. A stranger eateth the wealth, the riches, and honor. And a stranger in this text literally means somebody that's it, that it wasn't designated to come to. They wasn't the original recipient. 
The package was sent to another address. Stranger in this text doesn't mean that it's just somebody that doesn't know God. Or so. It also means that this person was obeying the Lord where you didn't obey the Lord, was doing seed assignments that you wouldn't take. They, they took your seed assignment. You decided, I'm not going to sow. I'm not going to honor God. And they said, I'm not only going to honor God, but Lord, entrust me with someone else's instruction. See, you only wanted me to get 500. I know that. But you wanted them to get 500. So I ended up as a thousand dollar sower because I took their assignment plus mine. So, so my sacrificial sowing is not just me taking my own instruction. It's me taking someone else's instruction. A stranger eateth it. It wasn't supposed to come to them. It was supposed to come to you. But this person decided to work God's principles. And God said, instead of me fighting with them to do what I say, I'm just going to give you what they were supposed to get. Now you understand why somebody can have three mansions and somebody could be homeless talking about, Lord, I, I'm, I'm praying for God. I need God to help me. I need God to set me free. I need God to deliver me. The person got three mansions. The person got seven mansions. The person saying, you know, I just need help. I, I'm in a shelter right now. I just need help to get to an apartment. I just want an apartment. I'll get a studio. I mean, Jesus said, he that has will have more abundance. And he that don't even have nothing, even what he has will be taken away from him. Jesus taught a doctrine that I don't look at your condition the way that you look at it. You look at situations like, oh, I'm so desperate, so I'm qualified. Desperation. An emergency does not equal qualification. That's one of the deepest things you're going to hear me say today. I can't say ever because I'm going to say deeper stuff tomorrow. The future. I said desperation and emergency does not equal qualification. And authorization. So there's people, you're in a desperate situation and you're in a, a situation that's full of emergency, but that doesn't mean that you're qualified to go to the next level. And that's why many people get offended at God. Because you're looking at your desperation. Secrene <inaudible> soluviana. You're looking at the situation being an emergency and you thought that that qualified you for deliverance because the attack getting intense. You think that that increased your rank and made you qualified to go to the next level. No. If you don't obey God, you rob yourself, baby. If you're not willing to put in the sacrifice of sowing, you're not going to be reaping. But if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. The text says that a stranger eats the wealth, the riches, and the honor. So this stranger is a person that obeyed God. Now God has given them double. They're not only receiving rewards of harvests for honor, for riches and wealth that came from their own instruction. They're receiving honor 
riches and wealth that came from them obeying the instruction that you didn't want to do. While you wrestle with God over what he asks of you, there's somebody that God don't have to wrestle with. While you struggle with fear to follow God's instruction, there's someone that has enough faith because they've been listening to the word of the Lord. They've been following the prophet of God. They've been listening to what God is saying. So they're built up. They've been praying in tongues, building up yourself in your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. They've been doing what the word said to do. They've been rejoicing in the Lord. They've been forgiving people. They've been keeping their eyes single. And so they got enough light in them to walk in perfect love, which cast out fear. See, some of you all don't have enough light in you because you mismanage your moments. You mismanage your cell phone. You mismanage how your attitude operates. You, you are operating the wrong attitude. You forget to thank God. Well, somebody is not forgetting to thank God. I've been in ministry for years. And one thing that I want to tell you this is what the Lord really looks for is after he blesses you. He looks for before he blesses you. Yes, he investigates that. But the eye of the Lord is really fastened on after he works the miracle. After he makes you wealthy. After he heals your body after he forgives you of your sins. After he sets you apart from those who wanted to tear you to pieces. The Lord is a watcher of the after. Who are you after? Magresco, Vodonos, Kelenions, Nicole Green, may the spirit of God rest upon you. I feel an anointing in here. I feel an anointing in here. I feel power moving through my body as I'm talking to you on here. The Lord is a watcher of the after. Who are you after? I let you experience pleasure. Who are you after? Prosperity cometh to you. Who are you after? I take away that terminal disease. After I cleanse your blood from issues. After I take away that bone problem that you've been having. Who are you after after I take you out of depression, suicidal thoughts? Who are you after? Who are you after after I cleanse your leprosy? After I raise you from the dead? After I bring you out of turmoil? After I set you free from the hands of your enemies? After I bring you out of that detrimental situation? Who are you after? I bring you victory with the government. Who are you after? I cause that business deal to go through. Who are you after when I cause peace on every side? And there's no more lions trying to tear you apart. Who are you after? I make you a millionaire. Who are you after? Do you keep on sowing after I give you 500,000? Do you keep on sowing after I give you $2.6 million? Or do you keep on sowing after I make you $10 million? You got $500 million. Are you still a sower? Can I still call on you? Do you still create an altar of giving towards me? Who are you after? I give you that debt-free house, that debt-free car. Who are you after? Are you still willing to only let people into your car that I want in your car? Only let people invite them over to your house who I want in my house. Do you respect me after, after, after?